Well, hello and welcome. I'm Rami Romani, your iFit guide, and we are here in the Valley of the Kings, Egypt. In this workout, we're gonna to go to one of my favorite spots in all of Egypt, a very special place. We're going inside King Tut's tomb. And by the end of this workout, you're gonna know secrets about King Tut that you've never heard before. So let's go. This is the Valley of the Kings, of course, but something happened here in the history that changed everything. The year was 1922. Two people, Howard Carter and Lord Carnarvon. Before that year, they've been trying to find King Tut's tomb. All their objective in life was trying to find King Tut's tomb. They heard stories about this place and out of all the kings and queens, out of all the tombs they have already found in the Valley of the Kings, they know that King Tut's tomb wasn't found, which gave them hope. Because here's the problem. Every tomb that was found inside the Valley of the Kings was already found before we really find it. So every tomb was stripped of all the treasure. Nothing was found inside the tombs by the time real archaeologists actually found it. Everything was stolen, and if you go all around the world, you'll find treasure from every single tomb. Now, 1922, Howard Carter managed to convince a guy named Lord Carnival who would fund his mission. Howard Carter believed that he was on a mission to find King Tut's tomb, and he believed that he will. Lord Carnivore funded Howard Carter, gave him three seasons of excavations. That's how excavations work. You fund a season, which is about six months. The first season, they failed. The second season, they failed. The third season, they failed. They couldn't find King Tut's tomb. And the only, the only reason Lord Carnivore kept paying is because Howard Carter told them you know, if we haven't found it yet, then no one else have found it. It's very likely that it will actually have all the treasure still there. And they decided to go for one more season. One more season. Howard Carter convinced Lord Carnarvon to fund one more season. They went through, looked around, dug everywhere they could, and the end of the season is here and they still couldn't find King Tut's tomb. They started wrapping their gear and the hopes were over. There was no more chance of finding King Tut's tomb. Towards the end of that season, they had to take some time off because there was excessive rain. They left everything. They went back to their homes. Howard Carter's rest house is close by the one that he lived in while he's trying to find King Tut's tomb. Rainy day, they send their workers, one of which is a kid on a donkey, very important kid on a donkey. They sent him to gather all the pieces of gear and equipment. And yes, the donkey slipped. The donkey slipped and fell in the mud into a little hole, a hole that as soon as the kid saw, knew what he was looking at. Knew he was looking at a tomb that they didn't know about. He ran, he brought Howard Carter back, and Howard Carter came instantly to look for that place. They brought everything back, they funded more time, and they started digging to look if that tomb is in fact the tomb they have been looking for. Now the reason they haven't been able to find that hall before is because it was under another tomb. There's a tomb that goes up and there's a corridor of it that goes this way and you can't see anything, you can't look around it. But under that causeway for the other tomb, what's King Tut's tomb hiding? They, um, they kept digging and in 1922, they were able to confirm there was a seal at the door that said King Tut's name, Khiper Ra, which, which is King Tut's coronation name. 
and he was able to confirm and the excitement they must have had. This is King Tut's tomb. This is King Tut's tomb. And the seal is still on it. The ancient seal is still on it. Which means the tomb will have treasure. They dug very carefully and they opened the seal to find a descent. We are here. King Tut's tomb, number 62 which means the 62nd tomb ever to be discovered here and that's all the tombs discovered here. The seal of the tomb that read the name of King Tut was right here. And then they dug feverishly to keep going. How, how it felt to be in their place that day to know that what they're about to do will change the world for the rest of time. We're about to enter King Tut's tomb and I have to say this is a very exclusive access. Very few cameras and people really get to be in there. Howard Carter arrived all the way down and on the day this was the end of the tunnel. No more digging and another gate. Another gate that they had to dig a hole in just to see what's inside. And that was the day. That was the day from the famous coat. They dig a hole in the wall. They dig a hole in the wall. And Howard Carter puts his eyes through. And he looks and he says, I see wonderful things. I see wonderful things. And he did. Through that little peep hole, they found gold and treasure everywhere around a tomb was gold and treasure stacked on top of each other everywhere they have never found anything that looks anywhere close to that treasure stacked on top of treasure his furniture his bed his slippers his golden pillow every part of it and it took him 10 years to try to clear them all very carefully while recording every part of it. And what they also found was the man himself, King Tut, sitting here right in front of us. King Tut was here in his tomb, inside his coffin. And his coffin was inside another coffin. And on top of his face was a golden mask, solid gold mask that everyone knows about today. I always like to take a moment to and stare at King Tut in the eye and think about his days. Because his days were very special, but not very long. King Tut died at less than 19 years of age. He ruled the country through just seven years of time. And it was all through massive turmoil. The country was coming back from a king that separated the country, that divided the country. Whether for good or bad, the country was divided and not doing well. King Tut was the son of that king who was either convinced to be, to bring back the country together and not follow in his dad's footsteps, or it was a decision he made. But whatever it was, it was the reason why Egypt stayed strong. He was a pivotal moment, this 12-year-old boy in all of the history of ancient Egypt. And he kept it strong. He died soon and of mysterious reasons. No one really knows or confirmed if King Tut was murdered or died of disease. There are a lot of theories here, one of which that King Tut died of knee gangrene, infection in his knees, when he was on a chariot, on a hunting trip. On the chariot, he had a bow and arrow and 
on the chariot, you have the bow and you have the arrow on you and you have the horse's reins in your hands, you go with the horses and the trick is that you tie the reins to your waist and you control the horses with your waist and you take the bow and arrow while controlling the horses with your waist and shoot, right and hunt or go to war that way. Now at that point, they believe that a big rock hit the chariot. The horses twisted, which twisted the reins, pulled King Tut around and threw him off, fell on the ground, injured his knee, got infected, and that's how he died. But that's the most traditional story. There's a very good chance that King Tut was actually murdered. But whatever it is, we know for a fact that it wasn't expected. King Tut's death wasn't expected. Just like the pyramids, every king in the New Kingdom would start digging his tomb in the Valley of the Kings right before he even predicts he's going to die. So he wanted to dig his tomb the day he was coronated. This tomb is not big enough is not impressive enough, is not a good enough tomb for a king of Egypt. And every part of it, every paint job, every way you look at it, you know for a fact that it was a rushed job. From the little detail, look at this wall right here. You could see all around this wall, there are little moldy spots all around the wall. That mold appeared right after the tomb was actually made and painted, but the paint wasn't even dry. And that's why the mold happened. It was a rushed job, a proof that this was a rushed job. Now look at the, come really close to the wall, please be careful, don't touch the wall, it's very sensitive. Come really close to the wall, and if you look, the wall is not even straight. A king's tomb has a wall that is not straight, unheard of in ancient Egypt. These are the guys that built pyramids. But it's another piece of evidence that shows you that this was a rushed job. The tomb of King Tut was built quickly. It was an unexpected death or an unexpected murder. If you look here, they cared so much about King Tut and they wanted to make sure that at least in his tomb, he has the secrets of the afterlife. He has the secrets that will take him through the journey of the afterlife. And every one of these baboons in front of us, every one of these 12, are one hour of the afterlife journey that he has to go through. And every single piece tells him what he needs to do through that hour to get through it. Who is he going to need to fight to get through that hour? What spell he needs to get through that hour and reach the final judgment of which he will end up going to heaven and living forever. And then they placed his sarcophagus right in the center of the tomb, which barely fits. His name was all over it. And all the magical formulas that the soul needed to come out and read, and everything in the tomb will become reality. The gods, the offerings, the support, that King Tut had will become real. Come closer here and look at this image on the wall that they've put. Right in the center there is King Tut, the young boy, with the holding a smite in his hand that smites enemies and the key of life. The key of life, they wanted to give him life, all the other Kings and queens are trying to support him. The gods are trying to support him. Isis is trying to give him life. Osiris is trying to give him life. Amun, the god Amun is trying to give him life. All the gods are trying to support him. 
It was probably a really sad moment in the empire. Inside this sarcophagus, they found a golden coffin, and inside the golden coffin they found another golden coffin, and inside that they found a solid gold coffin with King Tut's inside of it. Howard Carter spent 10 years, 10 years putting everything together in this tomb, writing everything in detail to get us here. And no one really went through Howard Carter's notes to try and figure out what happened. What happened to King Tut? How did he die? Who killed him? There is a theory going around. The only other human depiction on this wall is of King I. King I is standing there mummifying King Tut. King I was the king that performed the mummification himself on King Tut. King I was also the king that succeeded King Tut and reigned right afterwards. King I was also the king that married King Tut's wife, Anch S. M. Pa Imen. You recognize her name from the movies, Anik Sinemun. She was a 16-year-old girl when King Tut died, and she married a 70-year-old man, King I, technically her great uncle. King I is the first suspect in this crime. It is very likely that King Tut didn't obey all the orders, that King Tut didn't want to do everything that King I wanted him to do, who had all the power. King Tut was the son of King Akhenaten, who was the man that caused all the divide, all the conspiracies in Egypt, all the divide between the priests and the people. And King I wanted him back. There is a very good chance that I kill Tut. But there's also a very good chance that he didn't just kill him in this life. When I looked back at Howard Carter's notes, I found something that wasn't mentioned before. In Howard Carter's notes, there's a list of things that happened, and he detailed every little thing carefully. Howard Carter mentioned that on the day of the discovery of the actual mummy, when he looked around the mummy that is right in front of me right now, he found little burnt parts, little burnt mummy shreds, linen shreds that is completely burned into chard. This wasn't looked at before. I looked at it personally, I looked at those notes personally, and I tried to study and see why would there ever be burnt mummy linen in the mummy, around the mummy of King Tut. Based on the chemical testings I've done and based on the experiments I have personally tried to apply, it seems like the mixture of resin was on purpose excessive, more than any other king's resin, for it to burn. It seems like there was a mixture of chemicals in the mummy while mummified to make it burn, to make it combust right after burial. And there was one man in charge of the mummification process. The same man on that wall, the same man who married his wife, the same man who succeeded him as a king, King I. There's a very good chance that I didn't just kill Tut in life, 
he also killed them forever in the afterlife. But this is the tomb of King Tut. This is the tomb that made everyone so famous, made Egypt really famous. In 1922, it caused so much media coverage. Everyone came from all over the world just to look at King Tut's tomb. There was a Tatamania. People bought things about King Tut. There was an Egyptomania. There was movies. There was everything about Egypt happened right there and right then. And King Tut's discovery was probably the reason why Egypt stands out as this destination for people till today. King Tut is a dream and up till today every archaeologist and every explorer hopes that any any day he could find anything close to King Tut's tomb, something that hasn't been robbed before. And yes, this is it. A little bit underwhelming. A small room that is actually the smallest tomb in the hall of the Valley of the Kings. Every other tomb is massive with a long corridor, with a long burial chamber, with Massive statues and beautiful drawings on the wall, but look at this. Walls are bare everywhere. There's not even a plaster layer for them to paint on. They only painted half of the room, and the plaster was not straight. It was a rust job. And for us, even though it was underwhelming, and King Tut only spent six years of life ruling the country, he wasn't the most famous king at the time, this tomb is not the most impressive by far, yet it became the most famous discovery in Egypt. And the reason is as simple as nothing else was found that was never robbed before. All the treasure was here and it became a dream, a dream for people. This is it. This is King Tut's tomb. This is the workout. Thank you for sticking with me and I hope you enjoyed the stories. And I hope you learned something new about King Tut and who might have killed him. The rest of this, we're gonna go fly into history and fly into the years that made Egypt what Egypt is today. Stick with me. You won't forget it. I'm Rami Romani, your iFit guide.